Game 1 of the 2022 NBA Finals between the Celtics and the Warriors was a high-level showdown featuring Golden State's beautiful game offense and Boston's bulletproof defense. There were a stunning 43 pointers made in this game, with the Celtics actually giving the Warriors a taste of their own medicine by drilling 21 triples in a rousing comeback. It all started with Steph Curry one-upping Michael Jordan by dropping six threes in the first quarter. There was no shrugging in this case, and it looked like it was going to be a long night for Boston, handling Curry's perpetual attack. The Celtics tried to play him without too much special attention. Rob Williams is dropped way back on this high ball screen. And then on the miss, Marcus Smart doesn't really sprint out to Curry and the second time's the charm. After a made three, the Warriors set a screen at mid court for Curry and Smart calls for a switch, but Jason Tatum isn't even thinking about Steph. And after he floats over to Draymond, Curry's left with a warm up shot and three more. Here's another miscommunication. We usually see this nearby defender jump Steph, but Jalen Brown completely forgets what's happening and Smart goes under thinking there's a switch, so Curry's left with another great look. And in the ultimate sign of treating Steph as just another player, two defenders are pulled into Jordan Poole's orbit, leaving Curry wide open for three more. The Celtics did adjust a bit, they want Rob in a high drop starting at the three-point line with Smart fighting around the screen to bother Curry outside the arc. That's still not exactly good for Boston. They want Rob in the paint, not stretch to Curry threes. So they had him on Andrew Wiggins to keep him out of screening action, but the Warriors just sent Wiggins to screen then. And look at that glorious pre-switch where Horford chases Wiggins and Al can then meet Curry out high instead of playing in a drop. In transition this time, Horford slides over to Steph early. Then after he gives it up, Al steps out on the screening action, although that opens up the short roll game. Great hands by Smart on that one. But the Warriors are still a handful when a second defender jumps to Curry and he skips it to the short roll passer and they had a 128 offensive rating after three quarters before the Celtics offense exploded. Tatum was just three for 17 in game one, but his passing was crisp all night, spraying it to the corners and making the quick early read when needed. Here's a pick and roll where Draymond slides down to help, so he just whips it to Smart, and that's a comfortable look for three more. Here's a little handoff action in the second corner where Kavon Looney jumps out to Tatum, so he slips it to Williams on the roll. And his passing kickstarted the offensive barrage in the second half, attacking Looney in pick and roll here. And that little hesitation forces Draymond to help. Tatum instantly changes sides, and that's Boston's offense at its best. A few minutes later, Curry is switched on to Tatum, so he takes him right to the post and immediately moves it to the corner for another good look. This time, Grant Williams attacks a closeout, and Tatum's the one making the extra pass, and Derek White has a semi-covered three and drills it over Poole. The Celtics attacked Poole all night, with Brown going at him off the pick here, and Poole holds up until the end, and then Draymond has to leave his man to help, which creates a putback dunk. On the next trip down, Brown runs into Draymond off the screen, then pauses his hesitation so hard it's probably a carry, only to finish with a nasty step back over Green. With the lead at 10, Jalen gets the switch onto Poole again, and this is good defense on the shot, it's just better offense. And while we were admiring the replay on that sweet jumper, Brown was blowing by his man in isolation, forcing help, and that's an easy lob to Time Lord, and the lead is five. Out of the timeout, Andre Iguodala looked a bit rusty. Brown ends up with it, and it's a great hit ahead to Peyton Pritchard, and it's a three-point game. And Pritchard was big in this game. Boston ran this hammer play for him to start the second because he's made 50% of his corner threes in the NBA, only he's often targeted on the defensive end in Boston's incredibly stingy lineups, but he held up well chasing Jordan Poole around screens this game, 
and he was able to keep the ball in front of him for most of the night on that end. The Warriors even tried to post him up after a switch, and I think Boston will take that 12-footer all day. Later in the quarter, it was White looking to attack, and this is well defended by Clay. Only Otto Porter loses track of his man, who happens to be the White Hot Brown. The Jalen show continued on the very next possession, this time getting a step on Clay, and Draymond doesn't commit, so Brown finishes it himself. A minute later, it's yet another Brown possession. Clay stays with him well. But White does something really tricky. He tries to back cut Porter. Otto sees it, and thinking White's in the lane, he helps out on Brown. But White actually backpedals out to the line again, and Brown finds him for another three. On the next possession, it was more Jalen, dancing in isolation to nowhere. So it's new father Derek White to the rescue again with a Curry impersonation to tie the game at 103. On the other end, Steph missed a decent floater, and Horford completely outsprints Looney down the floor. That forces Porter to rotate so Looney can never fully recover. And with the Warriors' defense in rotation, Horford's open, and he puts Boston in front by three. After a timeout, the Warriors drew up a successful play with Looney slipping free, but Horford deflects the pass, and White is Johnny on the spot once again, and Looney is compromised in transition by overshooting Horford, who punishes him with his sixth three of the game. That is a career high for him. And Boston had success pushing the pace down the stretch, even after makes, with Tatum putting Curry into pick and roll, and Steph doesn't want to switch, but Iguodala never fully recovers, so the Warriors have to rotate to the paint, and again, it's a Tatum pass for a Pritchard corner three. The Warriors finally pulled Looney out for a smaller lineup, so they went zone to protect Poole and Curry, but Poole spends this possession in no man's land and kind of ignores Smart, so he's wide open on the second chance for the dagger from the corner. And with a sparkling 129 offensive rating behind 21 three-pointers, it was the Celtics' offense that proved to be too much for the Warriors in this game. Yes, Golden State had plenty of success on offense throughout much of the night, and the Celtics can certainly improve some of their defensive coverages. But they flipped the script in Game 1 by taxing the Warriors' defense, thanks to some timely shots by Derek White, excellent playmaking from Jason Tatum, and the ageless wonder Al Horford, to take game one of the 2022 NBA Finals. For more content, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. We have extras, a stats leaderboard, and more. That's also the best way to directly support this channel. The Thinking Basketball podcast will also have episodes throughout the finals where we go deeper on this series. Thanks so much, as always, for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed game one and that wherever you are, you are having a great day.